ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of week again where we do a live stream. Welcome everybody. We got some people hanging out in the chat already. Ethan, uh, Matthias, uh, Israel, Nayam, uh, I'm going to butcher this one, Ahumaro, Ahumaro, Mike, uh, Tadas, Luigi, Marcus, a couple other people. How we doing, guys? Does this look stupid to you? I'm. I won't. My feelings won't be hurt. I promise. Um, color wise, because I'm doing something a little weird uh, in OBS. Whoop! There's an abrupt ending to that music. <laughs> anyway, let me know what this uh, looks like. It looks like a little flat on um, YouTube. But what I'm doing right now is I'm using OBS to stream this. And sorry about the the flickeriness, something. I'm changing things up a little bit. I'm using a different camera. Wonder if you guys can guess. Hint, the autofocus is better. Um, and at least I hope it's better. I think it's better. It's probably more in the center there. Huh? Huh? Well, that's embarrassing. Anyway, uh, different camera. And we're using a LUT within OBS. So. I can turn it off here, I think. I'm just curious what you guys think about this. Um, yeah, looks good, people are saying. People are saying we're good. Okay, yeah, so we're using a LUT. Let me go into my settings here. I'll turn, uh, hopefully it'll turn on and off for me. Sorry, this is gonna flicker for a second. We're gonna go in here and I'm going to turn off the LUT. And that's without the LUT. So you can actually load LUTs within OBS, which is kind of cool. If you want to get a uh, more cinematic look, I'm looking over at the stream on this other monitor here to see uh, how it looks there. So this is just the naked camera. I guess there is a slight color correction. Um, but yeah, I'll turn the LUT back on. And as you can see, it's a little more intense. So we'll leave it on unless people are like, do this look stupid. Um, yeah, yeah, it is a bit dark. I'm trying to hide the mess behind me. Hopefully, we'll get that cleaned up this weekend. Anyways, uh, you suck at filming. Awesome. Okay. So, today, not too much in the news aside from uh, that Canon C700, which uh, looks, I think, interesting for the price. So, I'm not going to buy one by any means. Um, $30,000, $33,000. Uh, 4K raw 12 bit, I think, up to 76 frames per second. And if you drop it down to 2K, you get all kinds of other cool, interesting, um, you know, LUTs and things. LUTs. Sorry, I'm reading the comments and getting mixed up. So today we're going to talk about the Fuji X-H1 and my first impressions, early impressions. Uh, I'm not really ready to do a review yet. And uh, then we're going to open some packages, talk about some interesting things, and uh, just hang out. So I hope everyone's week is going well. Can't believe Wednesday's here already. Um, yeah, so let me grab the camera. It's right next to me. One second. So this is my very first Fuji camera. And I've always liked the idea of getting one. They always looked very interesting to me. Uh, the image looks amazing from everything um and for a lot of friends were telling me dude you gotta check out this camera and talk about it the xt2 that is and with this camera it had just enough to like make it a thing for me the other ones uh the previous models when you compared them to sony and canon and panasonic it just wasn't quite there for the money so i decided to give this one a shot and i really like it but there's also some things that are uh, fairly significantly not great. So let's start with the body. I love this camera. Previous to this one, uh, my favorite style or manufacturer was Canon. They made the best grips. And a lot of you guys know, uh, I really missed my 5Ds and whatnot when I moved away from Canon years ago. This camera is so even better, so much better. So for build quality and ergonomics, this thing is like 11 out of 10 marks. It's amazing. Um, I have a cage on it right now, which a little bit inhibits that. But I mean, even with the cage, it's just incredible. Uh, the things that's, you know, the grip is super deep. 
So it's a lot like a 1DX or a 5D where you've just got that really nice, let's see if the focus will work now. Come on. I get this thing set up and there we go. Okay, so super deep grip. Uh, I've got the battery grip on, which we'll talk about. And then this little thing right here is what makes all the difference. It's a little nub that keeps your thumb, you know, attached to it. So you can kind of just easily dangle and swing this thing without uh, any issues. So ergonomics are amazing. I love the buttons and dials. So the fact that, you know, you can adjust pretty much all settings with a dial is super slick. So let's see if our focus is going to work. I'm using the A6500, by the way. And there we go. So you've got your shutter speed, you've got your aperture, you've got this screen, which uh, is really cool. Let me turn the camera on so you can see what it actually does. I think I'm in video mode. Yeah, so it shows you your information. You can customize that. Um, you can't turn it off, which at first I was really upset about. Um, I'm like, oh, it's going to drain my battery. But if you turn it off, it will, once it powers off, uh, for a little while, it'll continue to show you your runtime, which is kind of cool. So if the camera's off, you can just grab it, turn it on, or not even turn it on, just look at the top and immediately see what your battery situation is, what kind of cards you have in, and how much time you have left, which is cool. Um, it's kind of like a Kindle screen. Hold on. Let me go ahead and mute my phone here. Uh, so it's not really going to take up that much power. I have this thing off with like a single almost dead battery, like it was blinking red in there for days and days and it was just fine. So, uh, that's a nice little addition and we'll talk about the grip briefly. I think this is amazing and I wish other manufacturers would do, uh, something like this. First of all, the battery life kind of sucks, even with a battery in the camera and two batteries in the grip. It's just really not that good, especially coming from Panasonic. But with the grip, um, it's super easy to pull out the batteries. There's two of them right there. And I love this little system. Kind of reminds you of like a 1DX. Um, it's just easy to, you know, you could technically, I guess, buy another one of these. That'd be cool if they sell them. I don't know if they do. And then you just got this little kind of like cartridge carriage. Just pops in, super nice. Um, also on the grip, and one of the reasons you really probably ought to get it is it has a headphone jack. Without the grip, you have no headphone jack. And then the st stupidest, simplest thing that no one else does, um, there's a jack for power right on the side here. And it comes with a cable. So you don't have to do any janky, you know, buying adapters and dummy batteries or USB, which doesn't quite work as well. You just got a nice old school... DC input and it uh, comes with the camera so you can just out of the box plug this into the wall and you're good to go I love that so nice um, and for those of you who use you know larger battery systems you can just tap right into that which is sweet um, doors and whatnot are great I'm gonna go ahead and open them up here no flaps just nice heavy-duty doors which is nice dual card slots on the other side so yeah build is good Battery grip is kind of a necessity. Um, now let's talk about what really matters and counts. Let me, is there anything I'm missing here? Um, yeah, so the LUTs, if you just Google um, OBS LUTs, you'll find a couple or uh, several different packs and stuff. I just found some pack that some guy had. Um, they take a weird format. I think it's PNG, so it's not like a cube or anything. Um, yeah, so. Uh, right. So let's get back to the camera. Um, probably the thing I noticed the most as a negative with this camera was the display. First of all, it's got a flippy uppy screen and a sort of flippy outy. So from one side, you can kind of angle it. The idea is you can, you know, if you're doing stills, you can do shots like this and see the screen. Um, kind of useless for video. Doesn't flip out, but the resolution or something isn't cutting it for me excuse me hopefully you didn't hear that too loud um when you compare this to panasonic i never use peaking on modern panasonic cameras because this this the stinking display is so sharp you can just be filming like this and boom even at like f1.2 on a lens or 0 
um, 9.5. It's super sharp, as you can see what's in focus. With this uh, display, I wasn't able to tell. I was constantly, you know, double or, you know, I wasn't sure if I was in focus or not. And that was with like an F2 lens. So that's kind of a problem to me. Uh, and what results is you're filming and you're like, oh, I'm spending all this time with this shot. This better be in focus. So you do one of these where you just go a little out and then back in with your focus. Um, and I was noticing I was doing that a lot because I wasn't trusting the screen, uh, even though it was in focus sometimes. It just looks kind of fuzzy and there's a range there that's kind of a problem. Um, the viewfinder, on the other hand, is razor sharp. So no problems there. Really, really nice. The image, um, it shoots... Uh, up to Cinema 4K at 30 frames per second, which means I've been shooting at 24. And uh, 200 megabytes a second, which is pretty darn good. That's double what you're going to get from Sony. I believe Sony's caps at like 100. Um, I should know that. And yes, yeah, so you're getting double the data rate, half the data rate of what's possible on the GH5 and GH5S. Um, and the image is gradable. It's, um, I notice, you know, if you start to kind of push it more extremely, it kind of falls apart. I have not shot an F log yet, uh, primarily because I just wanted to get out and shoot. And with F log, there's no way to add a LUT to the camera. There's no way to check your exposure. There's no zebras. So if you're just doing this, you've F logs kind of haunting or scary because you have no way to check that. So you'd need a monitor to deal with all that stuff. So I was shooting with the new film simulation Eterna, which is dope and uh, really, really nice. It's almost like its own version of log. It's not as flat, but it's pretty close, especially with vintage lenses. And it's got this nice kind of um, neutral skin and midtones and then kind of a cooler highlights and shadows from what I'm seeing. Very easy to um, grade, but you do need to get the image kind of in the ballpark. And going back to the monitor, it might not be sharp, but the color accuracy is pretty good. Again, I have no zebras. I have no way to check exposure aside from histograms, but who wants to deal with histogram? Um, so I was able to pretty accurately guess my exposure and what color was looking like, and it was pretty good. <clears throat> pretty accurate and consistent with what I was seeing when I sat down to edit here. Um, so that's good news. And I just found the shooting experience to be like no other camera I've used so far, including Canon. Canon is pretty, if you're okay with 1080p or crappy 4k codecs, it just, it works. You just film and it looks good and everyone's happy. But with this camera, it's just a different experience in the best possible way. Shooting stills on this, I love so much. I'm not a big stills guy, but with this camera, I was really enjoying that. The color, the different uh, film stock simulations is awesome. So uh, awesome for stills. The shutter is just glorious on this thing. Uh, when you're when you're in stills mode, switch over here. Oh yeah, listen to that. Super nice. Um, so yeah, filming it, filming with it, really enjoyed it. Um, the image, you can push a little bit, but you're really not going to be able to push it a lot, especially with like the GH5S or GH5, when you are working in uh, V-Log is sublime. You can really push that camera and push the footage around in post, and you really aren't going to have many issues, especially when you're shooting at 10-bit, 422, um, with a higher data rate. Uh, not the case with this camera necessarily, but it's going to keep, you know, it's going to be similar to like Canon, Sony, things like that. So yeah, I really dig it. The tricky thing is um, <laughs> this camera with the grip, I think it's what, $2,100, around $2,000, a little over $2,000. That's up there with the GH5, which, you know, I think that's a fairly fair comparison. Larger sensor, super sexy color, great camera, body build. But the a7 III is also $2,000. So that is going to be the really tricky thing for Fuji to uh, continue selling this when that is out there. That said, every single person I've talked to who has shot with Fuji uh, won't shut up about it. They won't stop talking about these cameras. 
I got to do something about this burping thing, guys. This is getting out of control every single week. Um, yeah. Lenses, that is something that's also really interesting. I've never um, worked with Fuji in the past, like I said earlier. So when I looked into getting some lenses along with the camera, I was dumbfounded with how expensive they are. So those of you who are out there with a bunch of Fuji X lenses, whoo, expensive. And um, so this is the only one I have. I bought this on eBay user from one of those sketchy sellers, super cheap. And it is the 16 to 55, 3.5 to 5.6. Um, pretty much the cheapest Fuji lens you can buy new, I believe. Um, looks like I got a nice fingerprint on there. And it's really nice. And that's, I forgot to talk about autofocus which is actually really good. Now it's not Sony level or like the A6500, which by the way is sucking today. Look at this, focus. There we go, maybe I just have to move faster. Ah. Okay, at any rate, it's pretty darn good guys. Uh, what I love about it is even though it's not Sony level, a6500 level and it's not going to be nearly as good as Canon's dual pixel it is so natural whatever software hardware whoever designed or engineered the way it works out of the box without tweaking any settings some there shouldn't be any like videos out there to 20 minutes long going into all the different autofocus settings um it's really natural it looks like somebody's focusing the camera and if you're in a well-lit space like I was upstairs you'll see this in the reviews and stuff I was upstairs I was chasing my two-year-old around and it was brilliant it worked so well and uh, no jittery uh, 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 stuff it just transitioned smoothly and it looked like a person was focusing when it wasn't great and it needed a little time again it looked like a human was was trying to find you know going a little past and like oh hang on let me slowly get it back there we go really really nice and that's with this super cheap you know lens so I'm really digging the autofocus I might have to get a couple other lenses probably not for a while just because they're so expensive but I was tickled pink with how good this this little uh cheapo lens was so yeah uh no overheating no and uh overall I've really enjoyed the experience it's just weird it's different so different color is the big thing with this camera it is similar to Canon in that it just looks super dank out of the camera. Doesn't really need to be tweaked much. Um, I would say if you're comparing it to Canon, Canon is really red um, skin and they get the reds right. That's their specialty. Sony and Panasonic are kind of off. Um, and then this camera doesn't do a lot with red like Canon does. It's, this, it's not a super saturated red. Um, but it, it has more of a gold look. So I'm noticing a lot of the footage is, is, uh, has a real golden um, and slightly blue kind of a mix. That's what this camera is all about. Um, and less contrast. So Canon, more contrast. Uh, whites are white. Skins are nice and red, almost beyond the skin line, um, or definitely beyond the skin line. And this guy's kind of got this golden, cool look. It reminds me a lot, if you're thinking of... Um, like uh, James Bond, um, Skyfall. When you think of that movie, James Bond and Skyfall, you think kind of golden, blue, cool tones. And that what this that's what this camera does great out of the box. So all that is to say, I really like it. It's just crazy that um, <laughs> the cost, you know, it's not an expensive camera and I think it's worth what it is. But with the competition that Sony's pushing, it's going to be hard to pick this guy up over a full frame stabilized, you know, beast. Um, going back to stabilization, it's not even close to the GH5 or even G85, other stuff from Panasonic. But it's, it's, it's there and it does work. Um, it's just if you really start to push it and you're just walking like this, like I, I shot a lot with my son, we go on walks, figured that'd be a good way to you know, unexpected, trying to keep up with a person and walking. Um, and you can tell when you really push it, it looks kind of like uh, just kind of all over the place. Uh, but it does, it is there. So that's nice. I don't think I missed anything. 
Is there anything else you guys want to know about this camera? Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Love the dials on the Fuji. Super nice. I agree with you, downfall. Um, yeah, the great point, the time limits. Yeah, 10 minutes of 4K. If you have the grip, it's 30 minutes, I think. Should I buy a 60 Mark one for photography only? Is there a better option? I think that's a great idea. Um, oh, 20 minutes of 4K without the grip, okay? Um, hmm. uh, yeah, so the 60 Mark one, going back to your question, uh, is that's what my wife uses for photos. That's the one Canon I've hung on to, and uh, it's really, really good for stills. It's a great affordable way to go. So yeah, I would do it unless you're doing sports and need faster autofocus because the autofocus is amazing. Is it better for the GH5S4 video? It really depends. It's a larger sensor. Um, I think color is fantastic. And it's just a nice, if you're, if you'd like to just shoot with a camera and a lens, a body and a lens, um, and you don't know a lot about waveform, scopes, exposure, log, this is a great camera because it's going to deliver. And if you're kind of a run and gun documentary shooter, I think that's uh, that's really nice. Wedding, I could see this being a great wedding camera. Um, the GH5S is just gonna it's got way more video horsepower. And the final image, the the quality of those pixels for video is great. There's a lot more depth there that you can play around with. Uh, but soul wise, this camera has a way more soul. You know, like cars, people talk about cars having or not having soul. Um, that's kind of similar with, with this situation. Right. So, unless you guys have other questions, that's my first early impressions with the Fuji uh, X-H1. Really dig it. And, uh, yeah, it's very nice. So, let me set it down. We'll dive into some boxes here because we have a fun lens in there, I believe. A used one that I found for super cheap. So, let's dive in. Start with this little guy right here, Leatherman out. All right, this is an eBay purchase recently. At least I hope that's the right one. Let's find out what's going on here. Okay, get that out of there. All right, so here it is. Continual fail. There we go. All right. This is the Soligar. They make some really sweet lenses. I've only played with one of their zooms in the past. Uh, vintage or older lenses. Uh, older lens. Uh, this particular copy of this zoom, and I'll just tell you, I guess, what the zoom is. That makes sense. This is a 35 to 70 f 2.5 to 3.5 so it's not constant aperture but 2.5 that's amazing for you know a 70s 80s era lens it also has a macro mode which is pretty awesome and yeah there's your 2.5 aperture um, the front element does rotate so you're gonna have issues with polarizers but nds will be fine there's fully extended wow a6500 is really struggling today there we go so yeah, it's a uh, great quality. I'll look up the price, what I paid for it, but it's I think under 50 bucks, well under $50. And um, this is an FD mount version. They come on several other mounts, so you're not stuck with FD. But I wanted to get the matching lens, which we'll talk about in a future video. So this is going to complete a set of zooms. I have an adapter for it right here. And I'm gonna throw it on the Fuji. And we'll see what that looks like. All right, line those pins up. Oh, let me make sure this is set to open. I will say that uh, FD lenses suck when it comes to adapters. They're just not nearly as easy to attach. But once they're on there, you're good. There you go. Cheap, cheap, cheap adapter. Fotse, I've got lots of there. You know, eight bucks. Where to put the camera? Somewhere over here. There it is. One second. 
All right, let's get this too crispy, too modern of a lens off here. Small thing, but I always prefer the, the release for lenses to be on this side of the camera. So you can press it and then with your other hand turn the lens. But on Fuji and Sony, you have to press it with your thumb and then release it. Small little thing, but always kind of bugs me. All right. Nice. Look at that. Looks pretty sweet. I know it's not really the most important thing when you get a uh, used lens, but it always is cool when it looks hot on the camera. Fire it up here. This will not help you guys at all because you won't be able to see anything, but I just want to see at f2.5 what this thing looks like. Minimum focus distance from me to you guys. Lots of flaring, but that looks fairly sharp for 2.5. That's really sharp, actually. Much better than I was expecting. Interesting. Let's drop it down to something like 3.5. Better. F4 is golden. Wow. So I'm really happy with that. So, yeah. Soligar, 35 to 70, I think. It's not 80, right? Yeah, 35 to 70. And then um, let's play it the macro mode. Or was that macro mode already? Hmm. There's a ring for macro. But I gotta go to 70. Let's see here. Sorry, I'm bopping the microphone. Hmm. Macro, so can't quite figure out how to get that activated on the other lens. It's a lot easier. Anyway, so I'll be talking about this zoom and the longer telephoto brother to it. Let's go ahead and hop on uh, eBay and take a peek. Do you guys care about lenses like that? I think they're cool. Um, it's really hard to find vintage zooms that don't suck. So one second. That don't suck and that aren't push-pull. So push-pull zooms where you, this is how you change the... <laughs> change the focal length, and then you uh, can focus, but they're not as great for video. Um, we got a donation from Bicomatic. I have a GX80. Will I learn anything from the G85 guide? Yes, since they're so similar, actually the same camera really, it's just different models, US and European. The only difference really is going to be the record limit due to video taxes over there in Europe, so. Pretty much the same thing, you're going to get the same uh, information. Yes, that was the FD mount. Um, all right, scrolling down. Ooh, great question from Tommy. GH5S or Fuji X-H1 for future videos? Um, I haven't used the X-H1 in the studio for a video yet, but I definitely will be. And we'll go from there. I mean, it could be a great camera. It, it technically would be perfect. You plug it into the wall and um, the autofocus. Meh. And, oh, I've also used their iPhone app and it's not horrible. It's not as good as Panasonic's, but it's it works. So that's cool. So we'll see. If I, mm, I'd i still probably pick a, a Panasonic camera because those are just built for YouTube, in my opinion. Um, I just use that phone app constantly. I sit down, Wi-Fi on. Change of focus, change settings. I've got a, the app that is like 10 bucks. It has waveform monitor. Uh, it's awesome. What mic am I using? The Rode NTG4. I wouldn't buy this microphone for this particular use, but uh, yeah, I like it. Cine lenses. Some, somewhere I said someone, I saw someone ask about cine lenses for uh, the Fuji. I have been for a good while when we had awesome weather, I was going out with my son for a walk every night and I would take a different vintage lens. So far, my favorites are the Olympus OM Zuko 50 millimeter F 1.8. Really awesome little vintage prime looks awesome on that camera. And that camera just really, really looks good with vintage glass. I also used a Jupiter three, I think 50 millimeter F two. Um, that was really nice, and I've got a couple other ones uh, inbound. Oh, the Helios uh, 58 F2, Helios 44 
is the, the product name on my Instagram. You can see some photos straight out of the camera. Um, so yeah, I think all those look really good. Some vintage lenses are just they really, they're awesome in general, but on the Fuji, they look dynamite. Monster Raiders Gaming, $2. He asked, would you suggest the G7 or G85? Fantastic question. I've got a G7 right here. This is pretty much my favorite budget um, recommendation for shooting video. You know, if you get it used, three to $500, 4K, flippy, outie screen, not uppy, which is what we prefer, always Audi. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Um, less crop than the GH5. Or GH4, and uh, it's a solid, solid camera. The, when it comes to this versus the G85, it might just be mine, but my G85, I've noticed, or my G, yeah, G85, I've shot hundreds of my videos in the other video in the other room with that camera. So I know that camera really well, and something is going a little funky with the color. Um, it's just barely off, but I feel like this camera looks cleaner color wise, um, out of off the SD card than my G85. It's really, really minuscule. Um, but it's really going to come down to, do you want image stabilization? That's the big one. Um, so if you don't, and if you're going to do something like this where the camera's fixed, you're on a tripod, um, or you're going to use this with a gimbal, get the G7. Um, the other downside to this, the big one is when you connect HDMI, first of all, it's in the grip, which is super annoying. So it's sticking out of the grip. And secondly, um, you won't be able to do anything with the camera and use HDMI. All right. So when you're just holding it, it's fine. But if you hit record on this camera, HDMI goes dead. And if you use the HDMI out the, I think when it's either recording or doing something, the camera isn't as usable. So if you're going to do a lot of HDMI stuff, G85 is a better option. But uh, if you don't need stabilization and don't won't be doing a ton of HDMI stuff, the G7 is dynamite. I'll probably never sell that camera, or at least for a long time, just because it's super duper dope. Um, great question. Um, another donation from Biko. GX85 isn't the same as G85. It's a smaller camera. Oh, I thought you said the G. I believe you said the G80. And the G80 and G85 are pretty much the same. Um, as for the GX85, um, yeah, you'll still get stuff out of the guide if that's what you're referring to. I believe you asked that question earlier. So, yeah. Thank you for the donation, gentlemen and or ladies. Um, Aperture MX or F7. I haven't played with the MX yet. This is, we're talking about LED lights here. Um, Ethan's asking this question. Uh, I love the F7. My video is coming up in two days on that so yeah it's gonna be pretty sweet can i destroy my lens mount if i use a cheap lens adapter to use no you you can't hurt your camera if you're getting proper adapters so if you're getting a you know olympus om to ef you'll be totally fine but best budget shotgun microphone I've yet to dive into, I really want to figure out a good recommendation for like a hundred dollar shotgun. My favorite right now, hands down. And if you can afford it, go for it. It's not really that expensive. It's actually cheaper than this microphone. I believe is the aperture deity shotgun microphone. I use that for all my videos now, and I've been using it for a year, year and a half and really, really like it. Um, David says, hey, Caleb, pass on a GH4 for $400 for streaming video. Did I make a mistake by passing on this? Um, that's a good deal. Um, if we're just talking about the GH4, uh, it's got some great HDMI out options. So if that's critical, then that would be good. Um, you have more control as to what happens with that signal, which is cool. But in general, it's going to be noisier. The color isn't going to be as good and it has an additional crop so this camera right here it, it will have a wider field of view than the g uh, h4 so in general i don't recommend that anymore unless again you get a good deal so meh, depends is it a waste if i'm using an atomus ninja inferno with the a6300 gh g85 um with sony 
I'd have to double check. Each camera is a little different, but I believe your HDMI output is going to be much better than your, um, you know, internal recording. The G85, I don't know if you're going to have a better output. Essentially, you want to look at the specs. If you're getting 10 bit out, that's awesome. I believe with Sony's, you can only get 8 bit, but you get 422. Uh, and then the big one is ProRes. If you want to pull an SSD out of that recorder and um, immediately edit that stuff without transcoding, then it's definitely worth it. You'll save a lot of time. Right. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's go ahead and oh, Aperture announcing new mics at NAB, I believe. Cool. Thanks, Ethan. Um, next package. It's from Amazon this time. I think this is a lens adapter. I'm gonna do a video on like the best adapters or most interesting adapters for uh, Sony. Let's see what we got here. Get that out of there, one second. All right. Nope, that's USB 3 stuff. <clears throat> I got a new uh, monitor here from BenQ. It is a 32 inch HDR. It's not real HDR but I'm really digging it and uh, but it doesn't have USB you know jacks in the back so I'm having to get get that hub life on all right let's barrel through a couple of these little packages okay so this is what I think it is all right that's for an upcoming video working on a monster GH5 cinema setup. And I needed a dummy battery to detap. This is uh, an adapter that I already own, but I've been having some issues with it. And I think this is the Mark II. Let me get in here. Uh, this is, you guys probably already know about this. Whoops. Get back here. All right, this is essentially an adapter with a, a variable ND built in. Let me put this over here. So have you guys heard of this? Let me know. Because I haven't done a video on it because it's been out for a while and I never did a video on it when it first came out. So there's the adapter. Right? Come on, camera. Cool. And if I spin it here, you'll notice it darkens up. I'll open it back up. At least I hope I'm holding this right. Yeah. So um, I have the one that has the electronic contacts where it communicates with the camera. So you could take a Canon camera or Canon lens, put it on a Sony camera, and have this ND built in, but uh, also have, uh, you know, change your aperture and all that good stuff. But it was it was very tight fit. And it did some real funky stuff with the color. So it's getting all brown and green and terrible. So I'm hoping this one's better. If it is, I'll include it in that video. And uh, great for running gunners. No need to have that filter in the front. Uh, you just have it behind the lens. And I don't really use Canon glass like at all. But I do, as you guys see, use a ton of uh, vintage lenses. So I can adapt them all to Canon and use them with that puppy. So I believe this is the one that doesn't have the electronic contacts. I believe it's like 75 bucks. So it could be a, a nice little uh, score there. And uh, we'll see if it's better than the other one. All right, moving on. Making the gr grandest mess all over this desk. Uh, check in, scroll down here. Ooh, interesting question, Bef performance per dollar gh5 or xh1 if we're talking just specs then um gh5 is gonna win hands down it's got it's got it all um yeah i would say that gh5 s definitely gh5 yes and that the stabilization is outrageously good um let's see Sup filmmaking people, Craig Adams. What's going on, brother? You need to get that uh, that podcast scheduled. 
Um, right, oh, okay, so this is um, a set of macro tubes. I'm trying to get this funky lens adapted and uh, it needs to be further away from the sensor. So I got these, but these are cool. You can pretty much for any lens mount, jump on Amazon and search for macro tubes or extension tubes. So Canon, um, anyone really. And essentially it's pushing the lens. This goes in between your lens and your camera, pushes the lens further away. You get some nice macro. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. Is that it? Oops. Yes, that was it. I thought I had something else coming. But anyway, um, really stoked about that zoom lens. Looks pretty, pretty nice. F2.5 to 3.5, um, 35 to 70. And uh, let's go over to Chrome and check out some pressing. Oops, there I am. Uh, get that framed up for you guys. Because um, I think that's a great budget option if you're hurting for dollars. Um, and you need, need a zoom lens for video with uh, kind of an interesting look because it's going to flare and uh, have that vintage look and not super crispy um, in a bad way. Right, so that is the Soligar 35 to 70 millimeter f 2.5. I still can't believe that's a super old lens. Look at this, 20 bucks. Buy it now, free shipping. Let's see if this is a good copy. That looks pretty clean to me. How about that? Um, screw mount. I don't know what version of screw mount, but if that's an M42 mount, this will work on any camera, uh, including Canon. So sweet, $25 Pentax K. Uh, as you can see, this thing's cheap. Here's a $10 one. So yeah, that's the uh, Soligar 35 to 70. F 2.5 and it's old. And I checked it just a second ago and it was pretty darn sharp at 2.5 for a lens of its kind. Um, the matching lens that's at a longer focal length. Let's see, I believe it was 80 to 200. Yeah. So check this out. This is essentially the other one I got it's in the other room. Um, this is a decent copy from the crappy photos we can see here. Uh, see description below. That's never a good, s <laughs> good sign. Um, okay, so this has a little dust in it. But yeah, so this one, oh no, that's 30. That's the wrong one. Where'd that other one go? Here we go. I must have clicked on the wrong thing. All right, 80 to 200 millimeter. So that's your telephoto long end. Uh, F3.5, constant. So uh, it's not a 2.8, but then again, you know, what, a Canon 70 to 200 F4 is still five plus hundred dollars. Um, yeah, MD mount, that's easy to adapt. So yeah, you could get two zooms for probably under 50 bucks and uh, they would both match and what I what I try to look for when I'm looking at uh, vintage uh, lenses specifically zooms this is a push pull it's this huge honking thing and uh, to change the focal length to zoom you you grab this massive grip that you see here and you push it or pull it hence push pull the problem with that for video is it's also the focus turning it around so if you turn your focus, you might accidentally zoom a little bit. So I don't like those. I prefer a two touch zoom, which is what we're looking at. Um, this is a two touch zoom. It's what most of us are used to these days where you have, that's oh, not gonna load. I'm just gonna grab this random lens, which is also actually a decent lens, um, another Soligar. But this, you can see there's two rings here. One's for focus, one's for zoom. That way you can set your zoom, let go, and it's not going to move around. Um, so that's what I try to look for. It's harder to find the further you go back. Um, finding zoom lenses that are too touch like this uh, is difficult. Show. Let's hop back in here and see what's good in the chat room. 
Any trouble with vignetting on those variable NDs? This one I don't know. Let me get rid of Chrome here. Yep. Uh, this one, I'm not sure. I'm hoping it doesn't because the other one I had definitely did. For some reason, Final Cut just opened. <laughs> At some point, I'd love to... What is going on with him? Get out of here. At some point, I'd love to show you guys... Maybe we'll edit a full video just to show you how I do it. Not that that's interesting, but I don't know. Maybe it would be to you. Um, yeah. Yeah, so maybe maybe we could do that sometime. Uh, the adapter is money, dude. Never seen anything like it. Cool. Awesome. So people are liking it. Do you guys have this model with the silver ring? Because the one I have is the first generation with the black ring, and it has the uh, contacts to communicate with the lens, and it sucks. <laughs> and it cost $200 back when it when it came out. Um, M42 to Panasonic G7. Yes, uh, totally can do that. The M42 mount, so if you see M42 or M42 screw mount, that's one of the best mounts to get lenses in because it works with full frame all the way down and it works with um, deep flange distances. So you can put it on a Canon 5D and turn it around, turn around and put it on a Sony A7S, a Sony B6500, it just works with everything. Your favorite GH5B camera. Right now I'm enjoying the GH5S and the GH5 together. Otherwise the G7, uh, and I still have a GH4, and I do use that because I'm mostly shooting in vlog these days. I should probably do a video on that. But uh, the GH4 um, can also do vlog and can keep up, so... Um, I will use that just for that, but the color otherwise and noise is pretty different. But you could also get a whole bucket of these things uh, and if you know use them over HDMI or SB cameras, they would work great as well. These will actually have closer, um, if you're not shooting in log, they'll have probably a closer image because they're a lot cleaner. <clears throat> Nick Randall, just want to let you know I appreciate these larvigeur. Thank you, man. It's very kind of you. Um, all right, I'm going to try to get... Uh, hit me with questions you guys have. I'm going to try to actually read in chronolo chronological order um, instead of bouncing all over the place. And I apologize for all the people who I've missed your comment. Uh, what's poppin', Samantha? She's probably right now the number one regular on the channel. So there's your there's your bar to beat. Um, ever, ever had trouble with my iFootage electric ray and Panasonic? I have not. I've had trouble. I'm trying to play around with these other USB to uh, whatever cameras things, and I'm having some issues with those. So, yeah. Are you on the G7 today? No, we're using the Panasonic, or I'm sorry, the Sony A6500. Reason being um, autofocus. Ha! But today it's being poop. There we go. Autofocus. Autofocus. Yeah. Earlier today was working great, but now it's getting weird. Um, so yeah, that's what's popping. Uh... What's the difference between micro four thirds and full frame? Um, more aggressive crop. So I did a video recently you can check out and uh, I covered kind of the differences there. Um, I think it's the GH5 versus GH5S frame and color. So check that out. That'll help you out. Also, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of doing a video on sensor size and depth of field because there's a lot of misinformation. I've in the past dished out misinformation but a lot of people think larger sensor equals more shallow depth of field that's wrong um, and they also think that uh, lenses like a they, they, the equivalent thing gets out of control so people say well it's actually more like a like a 50 millimeters more like an 80 millimeter no it's a 50 millimeter lens no matter what camera you put it on um, so addressing that 
And then a lot of people think telephoto lenses are going to have more shallow depth of field than wide angle, which is also incorrect. If you have a 16 millimeter F2 and a 200 millimeter F2, they actually have the same shallow depth of field. Uh, it's all dependent on where you are with the camera. That's where the difference is. So maybe we'll do a video. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, watch out. Zebras watching you. Greetings from Belgium. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Favorite manual Nikon lens from Scott. Great question, Scott. One of my favorites is the, um, that's a rough question because there's so many good ones, but the Nikon 28 millimeter F2. Uh, I owned that lens years ago and I want to acquire it again because I really love it. It's not 35, it's not 50, but it's also not super duper wide. And uh, I just love that look when you're at F2 and you get a little closer and you get that shallow depth of field with a semi wide. I like that a lot. Dude, what's your recommendation for a gimbal for the X-H1? Hoping to film weddings with it soon. Love your videos. Was hanging out with your buddy, Ben Barden. So that's from Daniel. Man, I love and miss Ben Barden. He better uh, better come to NAB. Um, you'd obviously want to dump the grip unless you're going to do the whole Ronin thing. Um, probably you might be able to get away with an updated um, Zion Crane. The, the Crane, what is it? I always get them mixed up. The Crane 2, not the version 2, but the 2. Am I right? With the bigger handle and the nice focus knob and everything. I'd probably go with that just to handle the weight because it is kind of hefty. Also depends on what lenses you're putting on it. Some of those FX lenses get a little large. But uh, that would be what I would go with. Great question. Say hi to Ben if you see him again. Uh, I need to see his face. I miss it. All right. Um, do you recommend buying rocks and adapter for M42 to Panasonic G7? Yes. Um, so here's the scoop for those who don't know when it comes to micro four thirds, a lot of us, when we think speed booster, we think meta bones, right? But when it comes to these smaller sensors, there are a ton of different focal reducers, which is essentially a speed booster. It's just different, uh, terminology and you can get almost anything to micro four thirds for really cheap. One second, burp, burp, mute button. Sorry, I can't get over it. Um, for around 80 bucks, you can get, pick your mount to Micro Four Thirds focal reducer. So I have an FD to Micro Four Thirds, was around 100 bucks, and uh, love it. So if you have a set of lenses, I mean, go for it. They're great. So um, the only downside is if you point at bright lights, like if I had one of those and I was pointing right at this light, you get kind of a bluish purple in the middle, but it's like a flare. It's not some terrible looking artifact, but um, it's definitely kind of flares easily. So keep that in mind. But I mean, again, for the price, you know, they're pretty great. Get a lens hood and you're good to go. Um, Christopher hub life is key. Literally unbox my anchor hub as well. Nice, nice. Uh, Kevin, any possible opportunities for internships with you in the future? Maybe someday the grand super scheme wish, which will happen someday. So I get, I don't know if that, yeah, the, the goal is, uh, the business and my family, we save up, we move to another state because Illinois sucks. I mean, it's a great state, but it's terrible for businesses and really anybody now, cause it's super in debt and they're, it's just bad here. <laughs> so, you know, property taxes are out of control. So we moved to another state not fully decided on where that's going to be. We build a house on the same property or the property next to it. We build a pretty modestly large studio, just kind of like a, you know, Morton building style studio. Um, and from there we'll have several offices, several small studios, um, like I love the idea of have like right now, I, everything's in one studio and maybe sometimes in here. The problem is to do a new video, I have to completely tear down. So if I do like a lighting setup, that's a lot of work to then turn around and shoot another video. I would love to have like the budget studio where it's a room that I can have just dedicated to, you know, little lighting setups for really, really low cost things. 
and then maybe like the ridiculous high end. I'd love to have a psych wall and also a large room that we can do some ridiculous big setups, but also set up a bunch of chairs and do workshops. And I would love to do small group, you know, 10 to 15 people for a weekend um, and just hang out, be more of an intimate setting instead of something real massive. So that's kind of the grand goal and with that would come a bunch of internships lots of job opportunities um but as it is right now probably not going to be happening for a couple of years so obviously if you're subscribed to the channel you'll be able to see where all that goes um okay where was that i'm close okay hey man thoughts on the a7 III? really can't wait to play with it um, I'm sure it's going to be insane. It's going to be really hard for everyone to keep up with that. Um, have you used a Sigma 18 to 35 Metabone Speed Booster on the GH5? I have, and it's awesome. Anamorphic lenses for the A7R Mark III recommendations. Um, check out SLR Magic. That's probably the best quality use and um, budget you'll be able to get. Favorite camera for photos right now? It's that Fuji we talked about earlier. So good. Um, I can tell it looked different today. I love the Sony autofocus, but can't afford them. Eef. Yeah, I hear you. I'm going to have to sell some cameras here before long. It's getting a little <laughs> out of control. Um, do you do color correction on the GH5 V-Log at 16 to 3200 ISO when you can't expose it, mainly focusing the noise and shadows? Um, I try to expose kind of high and then pull things down because if you expose too low, the blacks just fall to pieces. Any update on consulting with lighting studio spaces? Nothing right now, but I'd love to do that. Get a sprinter van and do a tour. Not like, well, look at me, I'm Caleb Pike. But like uh, find a couple people who could use a hand and uh, check out their studio space, work with them to put something together. That'd be fun. We got a donation from Rob. Rob, I'm so sorry for the lateness in my reply. $5 from Rob. He says, hey, Caleb, for shooting with vintage lenses almost exclusively, do you put any value on full frame? Essentially, Sony A60. A okay. So um, I try to get full frame lenses coverage, which is for vintage fairly easy just anything that's super or anything that's 35 millimeter lenses will work um not the focal length but you know what i mean 35 millimeter film those lenses um and that way it'll work with everything because if you're going to take the time to like you know research and find you know the perfect set of lenses and you're buying nice ones you might as well get ones that'll work on anything um uh, but most of them are like that which is good news so yeah, that's usually what I try to do. Um, and then if you have another question, hit me. Because $5, you deserve more. Thank you very much, Rob. Am I crazy for choosing the X-H1 or the A7 III because of Fuji's fantastic and cheaper lens ecosystem? I guess the lenses are about cheap, aren't they? I was just about to say, what? Because they're expensive. Um, but you're right. Uh, that remains to be seen. If you're If you're loving the um good lenses that are more affordable and the color i think you're not crazy i could like i'm i'm having a hard time thinking about xh1 and uh a7 III, even though technically the a7 III ought to blow it out of the water so you know we'll see g7 or g85 um i budget do you need a stabilization or not Thanks for the recommendation about the M9. Use them all the time now. Awesome, Scott. Uh, so check it out. I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. I don't have it right next to me. But um, I'm doing a video on how to take, if there's a cool lamp in your shot, you know, a lot of them are LED or a weird color temperature. What I've been doing is you take the bulb out. You, beforehand, of course, jump on Amazon and buy um, a plug to screw in socket. They're like this big. They're really, really small. 
and you screw that in, unplug the lamp of course, you screw it in, and it's just got a little two prongs, so the idea is you could plug an extension cord into a light socket somewhere. Um, but then you put a little Velcro on that, and you put a little Velcro on the back of your M9, and now you have a screwable LED light that's dimmable that you can throw gels on. Pretty cool, right? So yeah, M9, all day. Uh, sounds like such a slick video, do it. Uh, cool, I already forgot what we were talking about. Um, would love to see a video on this. Uh, I've already forgotten, it's gone, mentally. Um, have you tried Canon Profile Hack for Sony? I have not. Um, what do you think of the pinhole lenses for DSLRs? I think they're cool. I wouldn't use them much because they're usually like F20. Do you have a radioactive lens? Isn't too much risk? Um, I don't think I have any. If I do, they're super low. You know, you don't want to be like sitting in a room of them 24 7 but um i i do know that if they break that's really bad if the lens that has the radioactive stuff some of those lenses when the glass breaks it's explosive and turns into dust and now you have a condemned home so that sucks um you know try to avoid them there's a couple sites go do some google searches there's some sites where they list every lens that has bad stuff in it um so check those out and i try to avoid those if possible um, uh, someone's selling some stuff. Awesome. You're a legend. Thanks for that. I'll say hi to Ben for you. Uh, did his video workshop is epic. I vlogged it. If you get a chance to see it. Awesome. Daniel, I'm marking your channel right now. Cool. Yeah. He's a great guy. Hopefully um, soon, he, Jim Schofield, and I will all begin uh, re or doing our live show together. So that'll be a lot of fun. Focal producer, sweet. Um, coming to California, I always enjoy getting out there, minus the travel. If I could live anywhere without any consequences, I would live in Northern California for sure. But you guys aren't far behind Illinois when it comes to terribleness. Illinois does suck from David. Um, moved to Wisconsin. I've thought about it. You know, there's the, the tricky thing with moving is you're trying to find a good place for business, a good place for your family. So like being near family, education, you know, all that stuff. Um, and then a place that's just nice. So it's diff so difficult as a lot of you guys know, I'm trying to figure all that out. Ohio, Ooh, I kind of have this like allergicness to Ohio and Indiana. I grew up in Indiana and, um, I don't know why it's just be being dumb probably, but those two States I'm just not crazy about, even though Indiana technically would be super smart to move to. Uh, because that state is rocking. Love Chicago, but Illinois does suck as far as taxes. Yeah, Chicago sucks too. I mean, I love Chicago. Don't get me wrong. The city is amazing. Lived there, like in the city, um, and really enjoyed it. It's just, that's just getting worse and worse. The legislation, not to get political, but it's just a terrible place to do business now. And it shows. Unless you're big enough to be Sears and have the state pay you to stay, Everyone's leaving. Um, uh, Am I the only Nikon shooter here? Scott says, yeah, I don't know. Any other Nikon guys out there? Do you have any plans for DSLR video shooter to get together at NAB um, yeah oh am I doing a get together no I'll be hanging around the central hall if you're going to NAB um, central hall around the aperture booth just in that area and I'm sure I'll bump into whoever is going to be there so 
yeah, say hi for sure. Love catching up with people. And a lot of people have said, like, it's nice that you're, like, chill in person, which always surprises me. I, I don't know if they think that I'm going to be, like, super uptight. Um, so hopefully these live streams let you guys kind of see that I'm hopefully a normal person, too. Um, all right. We got some donations to get through here. Ten pounds. <laughs> Damn son, Daniel you just Moore hit with the wow effect. Daniel Moore gets the damn son because ten pounds. I'll say hi for you. Love your channel. Uh, really helpful. Um, looking to move to add video to my business vlogged horse shop by the Ben. If you get a chance, check it out. Awesome. Right on. Did I? I must be quite behind. Uh. Sh- Sorry to try to sell on your chat. Donation from jQuery. What? No one has ever done that. Damn, son. I don't know what's you happening. You just hit I with hit the, the wow buttons. effect. Sorry to sell gear on your chat. What's the best way to sell gear online? You know, it sucks, but eBay, Craigslist is terrible. Um, sometimes you get lucky and just something like this in the chat or in a forum. Forums are probably good. I haven't done that before, though. So, yeah. Good luck. Um, Utah. Yeah, that would be cool for filming. That's for sure. Um, have you got a gimbal you use yourself? I personally own a Zion Crane version one, the the original, the original. I just don't use it enough to want to upgrade it. So, uh, that's why Corbin Tyson on my channel does all the gimbal-y stuff. And he's also got some drone stuff coming up here, um, because he's really good at it and uses them all the time. Uh, all right. So let's fly through here. How's the new baby doing? Baby's doing good. Uh, I'm English, so I choose to stay with the toughest gun laws. All right. Um, any new lighting videos coming up? Yes. I'm trying to get back to the kits. I've been talking about doing the kits and updating them or doing more of them. So those are coming. We're going to do $1,000, redo my $500 one or my $250 one because there's some new stuff since those. And maybe we'll go balls to the wall and do a beast mode. You're ready to throw some coin down on some lights. Uh, Thank you for the kind words, Daniel. That's very nice of you. He's saying I'm nice. Or, uh, Oh, if I ever need a stand-in bald man. (laughs) Awesome. Bangkok. Oof. Um, Nikon shooters are coming out of the woodwork. Get out. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You guys are great. And the D, the uh, what is it? The 850. Pretty sweet, right? Beating everybody else out when it comes to that low light full frame, right? John Doe, 499. Love the channel and the G5 guide. Keep it up. Thoughts on the AVIO 4K versus other options for live streams using my GH5 in that general price range. Uh, it's really expensive, but it's it's. I've had several now of those little things, and they all have weird issues, but that one just keeps working. I'm using it right now. It's blinking away over there. Um, if you're going to use the 4K you know, option on it, um, you're going to need some monstrous power processing power um, or severely choke up your uh, compression so yeah um, it's it's the best though so if you can afford it definitely do it it's gonna stay with you for a long time typical you get what you pay for um, my sister moved to Nashville area that's at the top of our list right now is Nashville Um, I know a lot of people who have moved from Chicago to Nashville and it just seems like a great, great place. You still using the cheapo capture card? No, because I'm using that expensive one, um, for 24 frames per second. I would use the cheap one maybe on its own, but if you're mixing cameras, it gets kind of weird. Do you ever do stop motion? I've done it once. It was fun, but it's a lot of work, A a lot of respect for the wrong trousers. Uh, the video that you forgot about was the depth of field and focal length. Aha! Gotcha. 
So maybe we will do that. Thanks for reminding me, uh, Nicholas. Any plans to go to VidCon? I would like to. I don't have any plans at this moment to do that, though. Uh, we got a couple more donations. All right, let's see. We got $10. Let's see. What should we do? Let's do one of these. And one of... I do not know what else to hit here. This is embarrassing. Let's do one of those. There we go. PR Hamilton. Is the battery life on the X-H1... Uh, not going to be a problem for you. Cost of ownership versus the A7 III. Whoa, I don't know where you're getting those numbers. $5,600 versus 8200 respectively. Did an ideal list on Amazon for comparison. Um, it's not going to bother me, I don't think. I mean, it's not great, but with the battery grip, you have enough juice to get you through stuff. Um, it's going to be interesting. If that A7 III is all what the hype is all about, uh, I just want to use it and not shoot a stupid, you know, whenever we see these videos of everyone going to a Sony event, it's just the same boring stuff again, you know, just rain falling on a dancer. Awesome. But I want to get it in my hands and actually use it with good lighting and see where we can go from there. I, I think you're going to, whatever you get is going to be great. They're both awesome cameras. So, but I would wait for sure until there's some more information out there. Um, just went to San Francisco bomb. Hit those buttons, bro. Just want to s bomb. Oh, I don't know if I have bombs. $5 donation from Scott. Scott's going crazy over here. Give you a couple of damn sons. Damn son, you just hit with the wow effect. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right, <laughs> I think that's enough of that. Um, Kevin Nudge, have you had an experience with Film Convert? Any good? If not, any preferred software plugins? Great question, Kevin. Thank you for the five dollars. Um, I haven't used Film Convert. I know a lot of people use it. I just use. Um, Final Cut now has their great color stuff. And then I use Color Finale. I still use it. There's one specific reason in Color Finale, and somebody hooked me up with a plugin or tell me about a plugin rather uh, that can do this because I'd love one. But essentially, in Color Finale, it, you can pick colors and then change their hue. And yes, you can sort of do this with a Final Cut, but it's clunky. So I can just grab red, which is usually skin, and then just and only red moves or green. And then with each of those colors, I can change the hue, saturation, and luminance. Yes, I know I can do that in, uh, sorry about the ear thing, guys. This is quite loud. Um, so yeah, that's what I use. I should probably give it a shot, but uh, I almost get turned off when I see something advertised a ton and uh, they are all over the place. So I'm sure they're great though. I'm not saying they're bad at all because I just don't know, but I'm sure they're great. Um, what lens do you use? I love lenses and I, I use several of them right now. We're just using the 16 to 50, uh, from Sony. Uh, right. Q Curry again, $2 donation. I can get you a sound for that. Let's do one of these. <laughs> What if Panasonic drops a G6 in less than a year? That would be intense. I doubt they'll do that, but who knows? I mean, Sony's dropping cameras left and right. So who knows? Um, well, it seems I've gone quite over 5 o'clock. So I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this puppy up. Um, I had a good time. Do you guys have a good time? This was fun. So... Again, going to shoot. Well, let's see. What's next week? Next week's Wednesday, the day before NAB. Maybe we'll do a show before NAB. Um, what do you, let me know what you guys are looking forward to seeing. Um, thank you guys so much for all the donations. That was very kind. Many of you were quite generous. Um, so that means a lot. 
I think we're going to wrap it up here. Um, have a great rest of your evening and stay tuned for a video tomorrow. Uh, and I think Friday too. So that will be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about a new light, my new favorite light, a little clickbait in there. So awesome. I salute you. Have a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, yeah, let's, I just got to go. So. <laughs>